hi. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining today. Um, my name's Amy from Wonderkind. We have excitingly just launched in the UK. Um, so what I'm going to speak to you guys about today is a very dramatic title, why non-disruptive advertising is key to industry survival. Um, so, the contents of what we're going to talk about, thank you very much. Um, we're going to talk about who we are, what we do, why we do it, um, and then I'm going to sort of allow some questions at the end. So, who we are. Um, my name's Amy, as I mentioned. Um, my face looks massive there. Uh, we have just launched in the UK. We're already uh, existing out in the US. We've been running for about six years in the US. Um, we also have another side of our business, which is more of an e-com SaaS side of our business, but I'm going to speak to you about the ad side today. So, what we do. I'm going to show you a sh oh, oh, sorry. I'm going to play you a short video now to talk about sort of conceptually around um, the offering that we're bringing to market around post content advertising. Lads, keep it down. Oh yeah, sorry. Of course. Gotta go, gotta pitch. advertising at the moment has been having a bit of a bad reputation in market. Um, often it isn't received very well by the user. Ads, uh, advertisers aren't you know, pleased about putting it out there either. So we've done a survey across a thousand respondents into consumer sentiment. What do, what do users like across publisher content? What don't they like? So we had some sort of like a very sort of like broad uh, consensus across the market. Um, and these are some of the results that we found. So I'm going to throw a load of stats at you. So just get ready for it. We feel that, uh, well, we looked at the consumers and they said that they feel unheard at the moment. Publisher content is cluttered with ads. It's a very, very difficult space to be in as a publisher at the moment because they need to monetize their sites. But often it's the case that users feel that publishers don't respect their, their digital ad experience and also as well advertisers aren't respecting their digital experience. And now that isn't the case, but it's almost achieving this bottleneck of uh, an, an example at the moment. So what we, what we then found was is that they were attributing this bad respect of an experience to advertising, which doesn't bode very well for our industry at the moment. So nine, these, are, these are absolutely astounding stats when you think about it. It's a thousand respondents that we had this across. 95% of consumers say that they feel that their uh, experience is interrupted by ads. Now, despite the Coalition for Better Ads at the moment, we're kind of still achieving this race to the bottom in terms of looking at things like, is my ad viewable? Is it in view, you know, what's the ad clutter? Things like this. But we're serving at a time uh, that's actually optimizing towards metrics rather than optimizing towards attention. So the current state of play at the moment is that 60% of the respondents said that they completely ignore standard banner ads. But the solution for that isn't necessarily to go bigger with the ads because people also say that ads are getting more and more intrusive. But not only that as well, but it's, it's a, it's, it has a negative perception for the advertiser and ultimately this affects a bottom line for, for advertisers, which no one wants. But not all ads are bad ads. Hence where we're coming in now with this brand new concept of post-content advertising. So of the thousand respondents, 68% of consumers said that they are most likely to engage with an ad once they have finished reading. Now, if you think about yourself as a consumer, when you're going on to publish your content, the reason that you're going on to publish your content is to be able to get the sports content, the entertainment content that you came there for. So you're busy. You're busy ab absorbing that content then. So what we're trying to say is that we are serving at the end of a user session. 
which is where our concept, our concept, wonder kind ads comes in. Now, what we're talking around when we're talking about kind, and you think back to that video there, is that we are respecting the user um, experience. So we're serving at a, to, to a user once they have consumed their content for a fair value exchange. So in order to be able to keep content free, this needs to be an ads model, but on exit is what we're trying to say. So the way in which Wonderkind works is we have our tag directly integrated onto our publisher page. What this allows us to look at is different, what we call different uh, uh, triggers and disengagement behaviors. Things like where's the, where the user's cursor is going, have they, what their scroll velocity is, how long they've spent on page, are they scrolling down to the bottom, or have they been inactive for a certain period of time. These, what we call triggers, tell us that nobody's reading, they're not busy, this is the most opportune time to serve. So this plays really, really nicely into attention to be able to say that this is the best, best time to, uh, to, sh to show the ads. Previously, uh, for those of you that have been in the industry for quite a while, above the fold used to be the biggest thing that everyone was talking about. They wanted to be above the fold. Then it progressed into being below the fold because then you knew that the user was in, absorbed into content. This was when in, in 2010 there was the rise of native advertising, outstream advertising. Now there's a new concept now where we're talking around there's so much ad clutter on, on a publisher page. We believe that the best time to serve is at the end of a session. So some examples of what we are doing in market. This is the first example around exit intent. So, as the user scrolls down, they can be on this page for five minutes if they want to be. If you watch the cursor, the minute that it crosses into that URL bar, if they're going to search something else, is when we serve. So we're not going to be serving this whilst the user's reading, only once we know that they're at that inflection point between deciding to go to a different website or leaving that website is when we then serve a nice high impact piece. This is great for publishers because we're not taking up any of their space on the page existing at the moment. Um, not only that as well, but it's great for advertisers because you're going to be the, inter you're going to be the only ad on the page. Um, but this is where we're looking at the trigger, what we call is around the user's cursor moving into that URL well to, to go somewhere else. Now the second example that I'm going to show you is inactivity. It does what it says in the tin here. The user has read their content, read the article, they've put their phone down to maybe look at another desktop or things like that, the minute that they come back to their phone because they're not going to be interrupted at that time, this is when they're then going to be seeing that ad at that, at that time. This works really, really well in terms of app download, uh, also as well, nice high impact branding pieces as well. So we can also work full funnel within this space. We also have another trigger that we look at called upscroll. So the user comes onto the page, Again, uninterrupted, they're scrolling down, they finish the content that they scroll back up to maybe look at the titles at the top of the page, and that's when we then show this on exit. Often it's the case with high leader pause at the moment that you might be buying in market. Viewability for stuff like this is actually, it suffers often because the user just scrolls straight past to be able to get to their content. Whereas when you're serving it on exit, um, it, 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 it bodes a lot better. Working. Then the last trigger that I'm going to show you is around reactivity. So this one is where the user scrolls down. Demo it's not working. Sorry. The user scrolls down. Uh, there needs to be two clean paragraphs of text that the user has left. They need to be inactive for a certain period of time. But the minute that the user comes back and removes their mouse and they have initiated this movement is when we then split the article and then so, so the ad. So rather than in-feed, as you're seeing it at the moment, which is serving whilst the user's reading, this is serving only when the user, ha user has initiated it on a more friendly and kind basis. And it works in terms of attention. So we have run um, a lot of studies with a partner in, in the US, um, Adelaide, and we perform one and a half times better than what their benchmarks are at the moment. So not only do we drive attention, but it also performs in terms of media metrics too. So as you can see by some of the stats here on the right hand side. But not only that, do we sort of, we bring to market a new concept around serving at the end of session, but it also needs to perform in terms of media metrics as well, because when you're reporting back to clients, if you're working at an agency, 
you need to be able to report back on things like viewability, click through rate, qualified clicks, etc. Um, we're seeing on average about 80% viewability. Dwell time on this is about 10 seconds on average. Um, but yeah, these are some of the stats that we are that we are seeing at the moment. So why we do it, um, and why it's important for publishers as well. As a publisher in market at the moment, there's only a few different solutions in order to be able to increase the revenue that they're seeing at the moment. So whether that would be to increase traffic, which is difficult for them to be able to manage. Um, do they increase the CPMs from their ad tech vendors? Again, it's very, very difficult to be able to, be able to plan that. Or do they add more ads onto their page, which is detrimental to the user experience? So it's a really fine balancing act that the publishers have to do between you know, maintaining a good user experience to keep their traffic coming back to their site, but also being able to drive more ad revenue and support their, support their, uh, support their journalists. So where WonderKime is coming with a, with a solution is that we are giving them revenue without interruption. So again, it's not, we're not bidding for existing ad slots, we are creating new inventory on the page. We're giving unique premium demand, so it's only WonderKind that serves into those slots. But this all can also be at the cadence of a publisher, whichever way they're wanting to set us, whether that's only accepting some triggers or not others. So in summary, um, the whole concept behind Exit Intent and a WonderKind ad experience is that it works for advertisers, users, and publishers. From an advertiser perspective, it works because you're serving at the most opportune time that grabs the user attention because the user's not busy doing anything else. The user it works for because we're not cluttering up the page. Um, as, as a user, you want to be able to come on and not fight for your content. You want to be able to read it easily. And from a publisher perspective, we're giving incremental high revenue CPMs, but we're not also cluttering their page as well. So it's lightening the page experience. Now that is us in a nutshell. So again, in summary, it's, mo it's, it's, it's playing into that um, attention piece, but serving at the most opportune time. Does anyone have any questions? A little bit slow. So here we, here we go. So um, we've got an interesting uh, question here about, uh, sorry, uh, oh, and, um, Yes, I, I think I'll just read off the, the app. For, for, is, is, is mainly about um, uh, this uh, concept of disruptiveness. Because obviously your formats are sort of very respectful of people's uh, 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 attention. Um, and, and so the, the, would the inactivity aspect of your ad placement strategy not be classified as disruptive? And, and why isn't it? You know, uh, because your ads are obviously getting lots and lots of attention, so is that not by its very nature uh, uh, disruptive? But, but obviously, you know, obviously not. Absolutely. I think it's a, how you're defining disruptive. So what we're talking around disruptive is kind of after the user has got to the, come to the page to be able to get what they want to. So we would never, ever serve a high impact placement. So the inactivity um, trigger that you saw there where it took over that whole page, mm. we would never serve that whilst the user's reading. So it is making sure that we are, our tag is only called once the, that 30 seconds has elapsed. So if you think about when you, if you're on your mobile, for example, and you've read the article, you're putting it down and you've not been there for 30 seconds, you're not interrupting the, the session as such. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's how you define disruptive. We think disruptive at the end of your session after you've got your content, and it's a fair value exchange for the, with the publishers, I think. Yeah. So again, it's the, the, the timing of the interruption uh, that, that, that's cool. And, and the second thing is, have you done any tests to work out the additional value of that timing thing? The fact that it happens at the end. How much extra value are, uh, is generated simply because your, your ad units are so respectful of people's attention? Yes, of course. So as I say, we partnered with, um, with Adelaide and, and across their uh, benchmarks at the moment, they're, they're saying that we're performing 30% better than what their attention benchmarks are at the moment. So when we're looking at things like ROI, branding, increased brand awareness, it is performing really, really strongly. But, but without doing any specific research about that, but just linking it to, to benchmarks, that's very, very good. And then um, the last thing, the last question we have is, 
Uh, can you only use this if the publisher has signed up and has the inventory? So what's the, what's the relationship with the publisher uh, like? And, and how important is that for, for building this sense of trust and, and, uh, uh, and, and respectful attention? Uh, great question again. Um, so it needs to be a one-to-one -one relationship with the publisher. We don't buy off of any third-party exchanges. Um, we have uh, a team that is literally going to the publishers to be able to give them our tag. Once they accept our tag, that then allows us to look at these triggers. Unless we have that tag on page, we, we don't have the visibility. So you've done the hard work with the publishers uh, <laughs> on behalf of, of people so that, so that other people don't necessarily need to, to uh, do it. Well, that's a, are there any more questions uh, 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 to, 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 to add at, at this moment? Are we? Are we? Well, listen, thank you very much. Thank and uh, a big hand uh, for the guys at Wonderton. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you.